everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then what a video for you to stumble upon. It's very different from the other videos on my channel. Um, and if you look at my other videos, you'll know that they're kind of a hot mess and I don't know what I'm doing with this channel, but I'm just going to keep posting. And if you watched my last video, then you would know I'm in the exact same place wearing the exact same outfit because I pre-filmed these back to back. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I got into the publishing industry, specifically on the editorial side. So if you, like me, a few, year, a few years ago, I don't even know when, how long I've been wanting to work in publishing. Yeah, probably a few years ago, wanted to get into the publishing industry. You probably searched up videos on YouTube like this one and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, which is exactly how I felt. So I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to get an editorial assistant job, which is, as far as I'm aware, one of the most competitive jobs to get in publishing. So for example, my company just hired a new editorial assistant and we're kind of a small company compared to the big five. Um, and there were almost 800 applicants. So it's quite a competitive industry to get into. So I just wanted to share my journey, which sounds so cringe, of how I got into publishing. Um, and I'm still an editorial assistant. Background about me, I did philosophy at UCL for my degree. I finished my last exam in May, started doing work experience in publishing in June, got my full-time job in July, and then I graduated in September. All of these are of last year. So I've been working at my job now as an editorial assistant for just over a year. So it was like my one year work anniversary uh, at the end of July, 2023. And as of today, it is now the 2nd of September, I believe, so just over a year. Um, so how I got into publishing. First is, I didn't really know what publishing was as a concept. I've always been a big reader, um, as you might know from the other videos on my channel, but I never really knew like or conceptualized how a book gets made. I obviously knew that there were publishing companies, but I never really thought about working in publishing. Um, but when I was in my second year of university, UCL, the university I went to, had a careers panel with people working in creative industries, media, things like that. So I kind of knew that I wanted to get into like maybe journalism or like magazines, news, TV, something creative adjacent, um, but not like freelance creative. So I went to this talk and one of the panels was people working in publishing. And there were a couple of people that talked about their experiences working in publishing. And I was like, that sounds really interesting. I could do that. Obviously at the time, like I didn't really know how competitive it would be. I was also participating in these panels digitally because it was during COVID. And obviously during COVID, there were a lot less opportunities for work experience because companies weren't hiring as many people. People weren't working in person, and so it was kind of difficult to have internships or work experience opportunities, things like that. Um, but yeah, so that's how I kind of knew about publishing in general. And then after that talk, I thought like the speakers were really great. So I connected with a couple of them on LinkedIn and I said, hey, like, this is me. I went to this talk. It was really interesting. Would we be able to have like a call or a further conversation about this? One thing about publishing is that it's like a super networky, who you know type industry. So I think that that kind of really helped me not necessarily get a job, but kind of know certain people and know more about the industry. Um, so I think there's nothing wrong with a LinkedIn message. Like it seems scary and weird to be like, hey, can you do me a favor when you don't know me? But something about publishing industry, at least in my experience, is that people are really nice and people really want to help you. So I was able to have that opportunity. So I spoke to two people. Um, one person, I think, worked in PR or editorial, I don't remember, but worked at a publishing company. And the other person worked at the bookseller, which is like the biggest publication that talks about publishing news, basically. So big acquisitions, um, book fairs, changes in like company structure, things like that. So he actually gave me some really helpful practical advice. He was like, if you want to get into publishing, you need to work at a bookstore. And I still mean, like, not everyone who works in publishing and not everyone who works in editorial worked at a bookstore, but there's a very common Waterstones to publishing pipeline, I would say. Um, and he was like, if you want to work in publishing, especially commercial publishing, you should work in a bookstore so that you have commercial knowledge. And that was like the best advice that I got because 
after I got my job, my manager's manager, who was the person that hired me, said that a big reason why he decided to hire me was because of my commercial awareness that I had from working at Waterstones. So I worked at Waterstones like throughout my whole third year of university, just on the weekends, and that really helped me, I think, get into the industry. Um, but, you know, I also was able to learn about the things like how to pay in publishing is really bad, which I didn't really take seriously until I started working in the industry, but it's bad. Um, if you want to work in a job where you get loads and loads of money, publishing is not the one. Um, but yeah, so I learned a lot from those talks. And then after I, you know, networked with these people, I was like, okay, I need work experience. Um, so I emailed so many companies, like I had a spreadsheet um, that had like the company, the date that I contacted them, um, if they got back to me, if they were like, we're not doing work experience, or um, if I had a little green um, color cell, if I got the job and there was no green on this spreadsheet. Like I was emailing everyone being like, hey, like I'll do work experience. Like it can be two weeks, it can be for free. Like I'll do whatever you want. Um, and I was like, please just hire me. And most people were either like, we don't do work experience or they didn't get back to me at all. Or kind of the main response was it's COVID. So all of our work experience programs are gone basically. Um, the main one that I applied for that I really wanted was the work experience program at Penguin Random House. Um, but I believe that they had like, I want to say like a thousand applicants for nine spots. So it was crazily competitive. I obviously didn't get it. Um, and that was that. So the work experience that I did end up doing was unpaid, um, which was bad. And I, I feel very privileged and lucky that I was able to rely on my parents to help me pay for rent and things like that. Um, and so I was able to do this like unpaid internship, but it was for a very small Singaporean publishing company called Ballastier Press. And I did editorial and publicity work with them. And I did things like I hosted a digital book launch event for this book called More Than One Child, which is a memoir about a woman that was born as the second child when China had their one child policy. So I ran that book launch event and like sold tickets for that um, and organized that. I did editorial work like reading submissions and giving feedback on them. Um, what else did I do? I created a lot of like social media content. So like YouTube videos, TikTok videos, um, Instagram posts using Canva and things like that. Um, and that was like a three or four month internship. And it was very different from like traditional publishing because there was like no team structure. Um, it was a very small press. Um, there wasn't really like a separate production team or anything like that. Like the managing director kind of did everything. Um, but it was good experience because it meant that I had experience like reading submissions. It meant that I had experience using Canva, even though like the stuff I created for their social media, I cannot lie, it was not that good. Like at the time I thought it was really good, but you know, we live and we learn. So I did that between my second and third year of university. And other than working at Waterstones, that was kind of the only book work experience that I had. Um, and then I finished my exams in May of 2022. And I originally wanted to just go home, like back to Asia for the summer and just like chill out because I had worked um, every summer while I was at university. So I was like, I just want to chill after I graduate. Um, if I keep moving, it's because I have really bad pins and needles because um, I'm sitting on the floor. And so I was going to go home and then I saw this work experience opportunity called Opening Doors. And it was based on this book by Reggie Nelson, who is someone who grew up in like a working class, single parent household, didn't know anyone that had really gone to university, things like that, didn't know anyone that was very wealthy. So what he decided to do was walk around London and knock on the doors in really rich areas of London, like Kensington, Chelsea, and ask people there, how did you make your money? And so as part of the book launch for this, the publishing company and the literary agency behind it did a work experience called Opening Doors to help get underrepresented people into the publishing industry. So this was all done through Creative Access, which is a organization that does like training, um, post-job opportunities, mentorship, uh, has networking events, things like that. 
to help underrepresented people get into creative industries. Um, and so they do a lot of work in publishing. So publishing is very rich white people, I would say. Um, and so it's not very common, I guess, to see people that look like me in the publishing industry. And so I was able to apply to this and, you know, I thought, you know, there's no way I'm going to get this job, like publishing so competitive. I've applied for other work experience in the past and like, I just didn't have any chance of getting it. I just thought no way, but I'm just going to apply. Like it's good experience to apply. And then I'm going to go back to Asia and like, see what happens. Um, obviously I ended up getting it and I got through to the interview. I was like freaking out about the interview. My friend, Catherine, who watches these videos, she, um, I was, I was with her in Canada at the time when I was told that I got an interview and she like helped me so much with my interview prep. Um, and I was like kind of freaking out the whole time. And then I did my interview and then I got the job, which I was like super surprised by. So it was two weeks at a publishing company. So the publisher of that book and then two weeks at a literary agency. Um, and I really, really liked working in the publishing side of things. So my boss at the time was Nadia, who's one of my good friends still, who works at my company. And she was a editor on the nonfiction side. And so I worked alongside her on nonfiction books. And then I did two weeks at the literary agency um, with a woman called Shay, who is also half Filipino, and which is why I feel like we bonded. And I kind of realized like working in an agency was not really for me. Um, no shade to anyone who works at Own It, like they're lovely people. I had such a good experience um, working with them, but I just realized like it wasn't for me. And so, yeah, I was like, I know that I wanna work on, in publishing, but like I've only done this two week experience. But while I was doing the two weeks at this publishing company, um, Nadia was like, Isabella, they're hiring for an editorial assistant, like you have to apply. And I was like, oh my God, like these opportunities don't really come around much. And I found out now that like almost 500 people applied for this job. So I can't really believe that I got it, but I applied for this editorial assistant job. And then I, and Mattia like helped me so much with my application. And she also introduced me to like the person hiring Ben, who is now the person whose books that I work on. Um, and I remember asking him like, what are you looking for in an editorial assistant? And he was like, uh, someone that likes to read which now that I know him well, like is such a Ben answer and was not at all helpful for my application. But yeah, Mattia helped me a lot um, with my application, like reading over my answers and things like that. And I was able to use the knowledge that I had gained working both at the publishing company and working at the literary agency. And then I got the first round interview, which I was like shocked by, did the interview, thought it went horribly. Um, and then I got an email about doing a second round interview task. So I basically had to rewrite a blurb or like cover copy, the thing that describes the book on the back of the book um, for the second interview. And I did that and then I got a second interview and I also thought that, that went badly. And then I think maybe like a few days later, Ben called me up, I had no phone signal in my house. So I had to like run outside in my pajamas to like take this call and there's construction going around. And he was like, oh, we wanted to offer you the job. And instead of being professional and saying, oh, like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I would love to take this offer. I went, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. While well, the construction was in the background. Um, so that's how I got my job. And I think that it was, as I mean, as you can tell from the story, it was very much like right place, right time. Like I was so lucky that they were hiring for an editorial assistant while I was doing my work experience. I was so lucky that Madia like really stepped up and helped me with my application because like she wanted me to get the job and like I know that I wouldn't be in the publishing industry if it wasn't for her. Um, I was very lucky that like I got on well with my manager Kelly and her manager Ben. Um, so it was just definitely right place, right time. But obviously there were still 500 applicants. So I think there were certain things that helped me stand out from those other applicants. Um, the first, as I mentioned before, was commercial experience working at Waterstones. So something I talked about a lot in my interviews was um, reading the thrillers of the month. So I work in crime and thriller. I probably should have specified that. I work on the crime and thriller side of our book. So when I was in my interviews, I talked about um, reading a lot of crime and thriller 
uh, while I was at Waterstones because in my store, like, I was the only person that really read crime, so I would always read the thrillers of the month and, like, promote those to the customers. Um, I made sure that I was quite, like, up to date on publishing news, like, which authors were kind of the best sellers in the crime and thriller area. Um, I think that I was able to talk about my work experience and even though it had only been two weeks at a publishing company, I kind of learned a lot of things and like a lot of tools and made sure to kind of make them seem better than they were, I guess. And then my work experience with Ballastier Press also really helped. And I think using kind of concrete statistics, so for example, um, I said something like after the book launch, the sales, the sale volume of the book went up like by 60%, which like I didn't make up the statistic. It was a true statistic. Um, so just things like that. And I think just being able to convert kind of my other random experiences into something that would be beneficial uh, for the job really helped. So like, for example, I talked about how um, I have good time management skills because I worked four jobs while I was at university. Or I talked about how I did like a lot of organization and working with other teams when I was chief of logistics for Philly Fest, which is like this Filipino cultural festival that I was part of. So I think really taking the skills that you've gained from like extracurriculars at university um, or other jobs that you might have had is a really useful tool. And I think not you don't necessarily have to be like the most well-read person in the world. Like I definitely think that I'm not, especially in crime and thriller. Like, I did apply to this job because I wanted to work in editorial, not necessarily because I specifically wanted to work in crime and thriller books. But I think just um, knowing what you like, like, make sure when you go into an interview, you have a book in that area that you've liked recently and that you think has been published well. And I think, yeah, just trying to think outside of the box. I was also helped a lot by the people in Publishing Hopefuls, which is a Facebook group of people that want to get into publishing. A lot of people there helped um, with my interview prep and um, giving advice about what kind of questions are asked in publishing interviews. That really helped me prepare a lot. So if you want to get into publishing, I would highly recommend you join that Facebook group. And just like talking to people from the industry, like again, people are so nice. I met so many people through like LinkedIn or just people that knew someone that worked in publishing who kind of just spoke about their experiences. So I kind of knew what they were looking for. So that is how I got into publishing and became an editorial assistant. Again, it was like a lot of the right place, right time, and I was really lucky. Um, but if you have any further questions about getting into publishing or what it's like, feel free to ask me them below. Um, so yeah, that is how I got into the publishing industry. And you know, if anyone's interested in more videos about working in publishing, I'm happy to make some. I don't know if anyone who watches my channel cares about that, but if you do, there you go. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below anything you would like to comment down below. I feel like I said that wrong. That's not what I usually say. Comment down below anything. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below anything you want. And, and comment down... I don't even know what I normally say. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Uh, bye bye <laughs>